love you, Jesus. We love you, God. We thank you this evening that you're going to speak to our hearts. Jesus. You will speak to our minds and our souls. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, my God, when I'm in awesome one, consider Genesis chapter 1, we start from the 20th verse. The Bible says, 
Genesis chapter 1, verses 20. The Bible says, And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of the heaven. And God created wells and every living creature that moved which the waters brought forth abundantly. After their kind and every wind fouled after his kind and God saw that it was good. Verses 22. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. Verses 23. And the evening and the morning were were the fifth day, verses 24. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after its kind, cattle, creeping thing, and the beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. Verses 25. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and God saw it was good verses 26 and God said let us make man let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verses 27. So God created man in his own image. And in the image of God created he. So God created man in his own image. And in the image of God created he him. Male and female. Created he them. Praise the Lord. And God blessed them. And God said unto them. Be fruitful. And I and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish over the fowl of the air and over everything living thing that moves upon the earth praise the lord hallelujah um the text is telling us god gave us four mandates four number one is be what be fruitful secondly it says multiply that says replenish the earth. Actually, there are five, isn't it? Are there four? There are five. There are five. Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to share with us something briefly about understanding our right in God understanding our right in God God has really said it here God created everything he created the waters created the heavens and the earth created the living creatures created everything then after God saw everything was good he said now let us make man in our own image let us make him look like us. Because everything we have created doesn't look like us. We have created the water, yes, looks good. We have created the animals, yes, looks good. We have separated the darkness from the light, yes, looks good. But there is something that is still missing. Amen. And that was you and me. Hallelujah. And that was you and me. That was you and me. He said, now... I know we have done all these things. That means creation, God created, it was not God alone in that debate. Eh? God was not alone in that creation, by the way. After doing everything, he comes and says, now, let us, not let me, but let us, let us add on someone. Let us add on Mommy Allen. Let us add on Sister Bella. Let us add on Brother. Hey, hallelujah. 
And as we add on him, let us give him the rights. Number one, to be fruitful. Let us give him the right to subdue. Let us give him the right to multiply. Let us give him the right to replenish. When, some, when we say replenishing, that means something is over. You get it? Eh? English, when it's replenishing, that means it is over. Now you have to fill it back. Are you getting it? So God has given you the right to replenish, to be always replenishing. When it's over, it is, you, are, you have the right to replenish it back. You have the right to multiply. You have the right to be fruitful. You have the right to, 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 be, to subdue. You have the right to have dominion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to talk about having, knowing our stand, the right in God. Have, uh, understanding your rights in God. Understanding why God created you and me. God created you and me for all those five purposes. Being fruitful, multiplying, subduing, replenishing, and dominion. Scripture. Scripture. Praise the Lord. If we come to understand these five things that God has, the reason why God created man, then man will not struggle. Number one, if you're not fruitful, you're not showing the image of God. God expects you and me to be fruitful. Everything you do must bear fruits. We shall see them. The Bible says that we shall know them according to their fruits. We shall know you according to your fruits. So you must be able to bear fruits as a child of God. So how are we going to know that the right we have if we are not bearing fruits? If we are not multiplying? God expects you to multiply. Not only giving birth. God expects everything you do must grow. Are we understanding? Are we learning? God expects. The problem is we think that scripture is only multiplying, giving birth, giving birth, giving birth. God expects everything you are doing must grow. If you start a small business, that small business must grow. If you started a career, that career must grow. If you started a job, that job must grow. God expects it to multiply. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Understanding our rights in God. Understanding your rights in God. God expects you to be able to replenish it whenever it's over. Huh? To be able, to be able to replenish. If you say my stock is over, hmm? my goods are over, I cannot sell anything anymore because I don't have the power, I don't have the mandate to replenish what I have been selling. God has given us the authority to always be able to replenish whatever we feel is lack, whatever we feel is over. If you feel like you're not having enough joy, God is saying, may you be able to create joy. If you feel like you're not having peace, God is saying, may you be able to create peace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then, God expects us to subdue. Someone says subdue. subdue. Someone says subdue. subdue. God expects you to be in charge. Yeah? Understanding your rights in God. He expects you as you're subduing. You are in charge. You are in charge of your life. In charge of the spiritual authority upon your life. You are in charge of your home. You are in charge of everything around you. You are in. That is subduing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So. Understanding our rights in God, we must be able to multiply, we must be able to subdue, we must be able to replenish. So, subduing is being in charge, having authority. Many times I have seen Christians live lives of to whom it may concern. You live your own, you live a life, it's to whom it may concern. You don't care how you live your life. 
That's why, by the way, oh, being in charge means understanding doing the right thing at the right time in the right place. Am I teaching somebody? So being in charge means you, you are able to comprehend. You are able to do the right thing at the right time hmm? at the right place. So you are in charge of your life. You know how you eat. Being in charge of your life, you have to be able to know that this food, if I eat, is not good for my body. I cannot drink alcohol. I cannot take cigarettes. I cannot do this. I can. You are in charge. You are in charge. You are in charge. Praise the Lord. Now, understanding the rights. Those are the things, if you have those five things, then you have understood your right as a child of God. You've understood your rights as a child of God. Now, the last one that we love so much, dominion. Someone said dominion. Dominion, dominion means to dominate. It means to be, to take over. You get what I'm saying? To take over. When people see you, when people see you in a company, in an office, at home, they know, they feel your presence because you have come to give, bring good news, not to separate people. Because when you dominate, by the way, some people dominate to separate others. Some people dominate to bring, to bring confusion. But as a child of God, as you dominate, you bring peace, you bring unity. Hallelujah. You bring it out. Because you are dominating. That means you are not only dominating your life, you are dominating your surrounding. You are able to teach people the right thing. You are able to guide people the right way. You are dominating, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are, in, you are dominating your life. If you have a disease in your body, you are able to speak to that disease in your body and say, I know you have come in my body, but I refuse this sickness. I don't know what the doctors have said upon it, but as for me, I believe in the words of the Lord. I refuse to take it that I am sick. Dominion. Dominion. Hallelujah. When you go to do a job, you must carry a certain dominion in you. If you don't understand dominion, you may fail the interview. Because you'll think that interview is not for you. It doesn't matter whether you have connections or you don't have connections. But when you understand the power of dominion, you know that everything God created on earth is for my good. This job is for my good. Hallelujah. This thing is mine. This is mine. This is mine. This is mine. And because it's mine, I take charge of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These are the five attributes of God. These are the five attributes of God. God created everything he created. He never gave these attributes. But unto man, he comes and says, now let us. Oh, they had a meeting, maybe in the evening, maybe at night. I don't know what time they had a meeting. God the Father sat down. God the, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, the Holy Trinity, the Godhead of heaven sat down and had a meeting for you and me. Ah, uh, they, they knew they could not just create anybody. Somebody shout glory to God. God knew they could not just do it in a rush. The way they created the birds. The way they created the animals. They were creating in a rush. They were doing it in a rush. But when time came for man, they had to make a certain meeting. Say, mm, let us sit down. Let us decide. Now let him be in our image. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, when you look at a brother or a sister, you are seeing God. You are seeing God. You are seeing God. That means you don't have room to hate anybody. Because God created that person in his image. You get what I'm saying? So when you see a brother, you are seeing God. You see a sister, you are seeing God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nobody has a right to say you are ugly. When they tell you you are ugly, tell them, Oh, I am fearfully. I am wonderfully made in the image of Jehovah. No one has a right. Nobody has a vote in your destiny. 
upon God alone Almighty. Because God, they had to have a meeting for you. Are you understanding the rights you carry? Are you understanding who you are? Yes, sir. Eh? God had to separate themselves for you. That means understand who you are in God. Understand your place in God. Praise the Lord. When a demon comes to disorganize you, don't say, go, go, devil, go. Ah, no, 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 no. The Bible says that since the day of John the Baptist, that unto not, that kingdom of God has suffered violence. They are violent. Take it by force. So when a demon comes, don't say, go. A demon will just look at this one. is one of us. Hallelujah. Understand your place in God and shout, stand and say, devil, you have no place in my family. Lucifer, you have no place in my life. You have no place in my destiny. Right now, I cast you out. Get out in the name of Jesus and you will go. Amen. That is a man or a woman who has understood their rights in God. Number one, we say, you do what? Be fruitful. Be fruitful. May we see the fruits of your service. Even as you're serving God, we want to see fruits. Eh? We want to see fruits in your life. Your, your life you should change. You cannot serve God for 20 years. Huh? 20 years and you're like this. Something should change. We, we, we should see something so that we believe you have been serving a God. And if we are not seeing those fruits, there's a problem. There's a problem. Be fruitful. Be fruitful as you serve God. Be fruitful as you pray. In everything you do, be diligently. Do it diligently and understand that God gives you fruits. Amen? Amen? Even as you're doing it, secondly, be able to multiply. God wants you to multiply. Now people only know that God wants you to give birth. Then you start giving birth here, you give birth here, you give birth here, give birth. You know people have understood that scripture like that. It's right, by the way, it's right. You get it? Eh? I had a friend of mine who told me, uh, he asked me, how many kids do you want to have? And I told him, uh, probably three or four. He told me, oh, you are not fulfilling scriptures, brother. <laughs> you are not fulfilling scriptures. The, the scripture, and he opened, he said, let's go to Genesis. Here he's saying, multiply. And fill the earth. I told him, are you going to fill the earth alone, my brother? Praise the Lord. But that scripture was not only saying multiplication through birth. Multiplication through everything you do. You get it, eh? Everything you do must be able to grow. Let it grow. Grow. Your career should not be stagnant. Your career must be able to increase. Because the Bible says that we are from glory to glory. From grace to grace. Amen? From grace to grace. Even the church, the ministry should be seen growing. A church that is not growing, there is a problem. Are you getting it? A church that is not growing, there is a problem. There must be seen. Multiplication must be seen. Something must happen. Something must happen. To the glory of God. So God gave us these five attributes of him. So that we can understand our rights in the kingdom. You are a child of God. You are a daughter of God. Don't let that devil make you feel you are nothing. Don't make the devil feel. Actually when the devil comes to show you who he is. Show him who your God is. Hallelujah. Show him who your God is. Because that devil, may, even that devil by the comes to anybody. Because even he came to Jesus. When Jesus from fasting, he came. He comes to anybody. Praise the Lord. But when he comes, show him where he belongs. Don't give him room. And he comes with disappointment. So say, yesterday you sinned. You think God will forgive you. Yesterday you did this. You think, huh, huh? Blah, 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 everything. Hallelujah. The Bible says, one day the children of God came to meet their God. And that devil had the audacity to also go. And God asked him, where are you from? He told God, I am from to and fro. It was, by the way, that is the cross. To 
and fro. <laughs> I'm from to and fro. To and fro. God said, okay, since you have been from to and fro moving around, have you seen my servant Job? Have you seen my servant Regan? Huh? Have you seen him? God is boasting with you. Hallelujah. Have you seen Mami Allen? Yeah, have you seen it? I said, yeah, I have seen that guy. I know him, by the way. I know if you can only remove the money, if you can only remove the job, if you can only remove the marriage, if you can, ah, if you can, that guy will, will, will curse you, he will leave you. God told him, try. But the only power I don't give you is to kill his life. Don't touch his life. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. God was so boasting with, for job. God was boasting. Do you know at times God sits in heaven and is boasting for you? Huh? Do you know God can be boasting and say, oh, have you seen my daughter? Have you seen my servant? Have you seen him? He's boasting. He's happy. Praise the Lord. And when the devil comes, please don't let God down. Some of you, when God takes away that sweetheart, oh, I'll not come to Epiphane again. I'll not come to church. Okay, when God takes away that job, then be like, That's, oh, wow, how could he do that? I can't take, I can't pray again. I will not pray. No. That's the time you need to now show God that you love him. You didn't love him because of the job. You loved him because he created you in his image. You loved him because he's your father. You loved him because he's your maker. You loved him not because of anything. Hallelujah. Stand firm in God and show your rights in God. Show your rights in God. If we say we are believing God for something crazy, we are understanding our right in God. Uh, that God is able to do exceedingly. By the way, the scriptures say that what the eyes have not seen, God, ah, what the ears have not heard, what has not yet been comprehended in the hearts of men, God is... God is trying to tell you that even that car that you have is not what he wants to give you. He wants to give you what the eyes have not seen. He wants to give you that which the ears have not heard. That which even nobody has comprehended in their hearts. That is what God has for you in store. That is what God has for us in store. Somebody shout glory. So from today onwards, as you're asking God, Ask God for something big. Is it not him who said that whatsoever you shall ask, he did not, he did not, by the way, God never, let me paraphrase. He didn't say, when you ask for a bicycle, what I'll give you, ask for. God said whatsoever. That means even a plane, it's whatsoever. Are you getting the revelation? That means a big mansion is whatsoever. That means having buildings, having it is possible. You can be a billionaire. It's possible. Because whatsoever, whatsoever you ask in my name, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. We serve a rich God. We serve a rich God. We serve a rich God. The problem, I always get annoyed why I see, when I see, even people who don't know God are so doing well. Do you know the richest man on earth doesn't know God? Doesn't even open the Bible. <laughs> That's why, brothers and sisters, if prayer hmm, would make people rich, born again would be rich. Why? I'm not saying prayer is bad. The scriptures say that even when we pray, we pray amiss. You get it? Even when your hearts are praying, your hearts are envious, your hearts are, you're being covetous, you, you pray amiss, you pray without knowledge. That's why you can be on a prayer mountain for 40 days and come back and be the normal person. Nothing changed because you don't pray with understanding. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't pray with knowledge. Amen? I'm not saying we, 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 we don't pray. I'm just trying to say. Even these people, by the one day David had that question, I, I'll get that scripture. David one day got annoyed with God. He said, Father, why is it that the Ethans who don't know you are prospering, but me, I am suffering? God told him, my son, don't worry. Those people, theirs is for a meantime. Theirs is for a short time. But yours is for internal and internal and from glory to glory. Amen? When God gives you wealth, the Bible says that the blessings of God maketh rich and hides no sorrow. You understand that? Now, the blessings of God that makes, when God gives you money, God wants to give you money so that you sleep at night. You see these people who are rich, most of them don't sleep at night. They don't even enjoy the money. But God wants to make you rich so that you enjoy your money, so that you sleep in peace, so that you are happy, because the blessings of God adds no sorrow. It makes you rich. It makes you rich. It makes you rich. Amen. Amen. And also, let us not pray like King Solomon. King Solomon said, oh, I don't like that prayer of King Solomon. He said, Father, don't make me too rich so that I forget about you. Don't make me too poor so that I don't show your presence. Make me be in the middle. <laughs> How many of you have read that scripture? <laughs> me. By the way, King Solomon, when he said that, in Ecclesiastes, he came and reversed it. <laughs> he came and reversed it. He said, I have owned everything. God gave me everything. That's when he was writing the book of Ecclesiastes. He said, I have, seen, I have seen cattle. I have owned everything. I have owned everything. But I've come to realize that the world is useless. Vanity, vanity. He came and reversed what he said in Kings of Kings, in Second Kings. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Don't pray that God give you little. By the way, God knows some of you, if he gives you even little, you'll run away from church. That's the time your friends are going to suffer. Praise the Lord. <laughs> no, tell God to give you enough. God will give you enough for you. Amen. God will give you enough so that you'll be a blessing to others. I want God to give me money so rich so that I bless people. So that I do crusades. Imagine God gives me money. We will do crusades every week. Now, why should I pray, give me little, so I forget about you? Maybe before, don't give me too much. Ah, give me too much. Give me too much so that I do your work. Praise the Lord. That's a prayer that you should have. Solomon prayed that, but when he came to understanding in the book of Ecclesiastes, he reversed that prayer. He told God, that God, now you have given me too much, and I've endured, and I've seen it. But I've seen, after even what you, are, you have given me, I've seen the world is vanity. Vanity, 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 vanity. Because he had seen it all. Praise the Lord. Somebody shout glory to God. So understand your place in God. Understand your place as a child of God. Understand your authority in God. Do not allow people to dictate your life. Don't allow anybody to dictate your life. That means even as parents, you parents who are here, you must be able to speak future to the lives of your children. You must be able to speak life to them. Don't be saying, ah, you want to... The Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should live so that when he grows up, he will not depart from that. Amen? But the scriptures did not say, train up a child in the way he should not live. Now, I keep telling us here, when you start telling your child, when you grow up, don't be a thief. You are telling him or her to be a thief. When you grow up, don't be a prostitute. You are telling him to be a prostitute. But tell your child, oh, I see you a multi-billionaire. When you grow up, I'm seeing you, I'm seeing you rich. I'm seeing you finishing your education. I'm seeing you getting married. I'm seeing you this. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You are speaking destiny to your people. Because you understand your right in God. By the way, everything we speak from our mouth, like I read your scripture in the morning, it has the tongue has the power of death and life. That's why you must be very careful 
to speak anything contrary to the life of a brother, the life of a sister. Amen? Because anything little you can say can ruin that person's destiny. Because there's power in our tongues. And it's more so, more powerful than that. More powerful for us who are in Christ. Amen? Whatever we speak must come to pass. Because we understand our rights in Jesus. Let's rise up on our feet and we pray.